Hi card makers, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap. This is the Let It Be Card Kit Assembly Workshop. I'm really excited about what we're going to make with this gorgeous collection. It's just the perfect amount of sweet, cute, and classy. I love that combination of um, artwork that we have here and some fun puns and just some very sweet cards we'll make. As you can see, I have my instructions here. I've got my, my card kit itself. And um, also helping me today, I've got the usual Fiskars Guillotine Bypass Trimmer. If you don't have this particular trimmer, I, I highly recommend it for your best success with our unique method, our efficient method. And then also to help with inefficiency, I've got the accordion pocket file. This file has four pockets, and then there's one pocket for each individual card, as well as a pocket for all of the things that I don't necessarily use at the outset, but that you may want to incorporate into your finished cards. If you don't have this, just make sure you keep four separate piles, one for each card set, and then one for your um, your discards. So I'm gonna set aside the beautiful ribbon that came in this kit. We've got some miniature envelopes. In fact, these are all used in set B, so I can go ahead and put those in the pocket for D. And then we have these adorable little tags. Those are used in set A, these little ball jar tags. So you can just pop those right in there, and then we'll set these charms aside. These are all used in set A as well. So everything has a home. I like that we use up all of the things rather than having to store and organize them. It's so much more efficient. Okay, next we're going to take all the papers and put them in the order that we'll be using them. So I'm going to read back in my stack here and look for a piece of this gold paper. So I'm just going to take that out of my stack and put it on my trimmer base followed by a sheet of the brown plane. So there's this dark dark brown. You'll use that one next. It, it just helps to put the paper in order so that we can find it easily and keep track of all the different colors. Now I'm looking for a dark yellow. So there are two yellows. This one's so dark it's almost an orange. So that's what we're looking for next. One dark yellow followed by a print. Now for this print I'm just going to take one of them and put it face down on my work surface. Then I'll take the ivory linen. This is a gorgeous textured paper. It's extremely heavy. So I'll take that one piece and put it face down followed by a light yellow. Then we're going to grab the other gold. So this is it's almost like a terracotta almost. Uh, the gold will be next and then another dark yellow, another light yellow, and then the other print. I'll put that face down followed by, let's see, the cut apart that has the two narrow strips on the right edge put that face down and then this other one that has like your the bees knees here on this artwork finally there are two extra pieces of this beautiful sparkly handmade paper and i'm going to put those at the bottom of the stack we're going to tear those in a in a easy way into panels for our cards so i'm going to flip everything back over to the original gold piece that we first found and let's get started with our trimming as you cut the paper, make sure it accumulates to the right side of the trimmer until I have you either trim it some more or file it. So I'll take this gold sheet of paper and I'm going to just find the grain direction of this paper so that later on when I fold the paper, I'm folding with the grain and not against the grain. So to find the grain, just hold by an edge, just right in the center of an edge, and then study the behavior of the paper. I want this paper to dip easily from the top to the bottom of my trimmer base. I'm going to just compare and hold it by this edge, and it's extremely stiff. This paper doesn't want to bend at all. But if I have it on this side, it bends easily. So that's how it goes into my trimmer. And I'm going to slice at 11 and 3 quarters. So if you're new to this whole process, to find 11 and 3 quarters, you find the whole number first, 11. Make sure you're looking at the inches and not the centimeters. Inches are over here. And then Every column on this trimmer base is a quarter of an inch. So 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, 11 and three quarters. It's a nice trimmer to be able to see very well. Then slide down to seven and a half. Now take this seven and a half inch piece and rotate it so it's horizontal. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter. And nine. 
Now this piece grows up to become a base for a special uh, gift box that we're, we'll be making with this set. So this is the box we're making. You can see the gold paper. There's the tray that this, this piece will grow up to become. Just wanted to let you know where we're headed. And I'm gonna take this piece and set it aside to be scored. And then we do have another uh, rectangular piece here. This is currently two and a quarter by seven and a half. Let's just cut this in half at three and three quarters and gather up the two rectangles you just made and place those in pocket C. Now, if I'm going too fast, which I probably am if you're brand new to this, your YouTube channel playback has a gear setting symbol. Just click on the gear and slow my playback speed down to a speed that's comfortable for you. For many, it's just 0.75 is slow enough. Otherwise, if you want it really slow, like almost sleeping, Trisha, put it on 0.5. This last little strip can go on pocket D for decorative potential later on. Now I'm going to grab the four and a quarter by 12 and we'll trim that horizontally at 11. This will become a card base. I'm going to score that a little later. So add it to my scoring pile. And then we have two little pieces left. Both of them can go into pocket D. And we'll go ahead and take the brown piece, find the green direction by holding the paper from an edge. This is stiff, flexible. I want it dipping, flexible from top to bottom. To accommodate our future folding, I'm gonna cut it six and a half. And always stabilize on this clear bar. This is such a nice feature of this trimmer. <laughs> then rotate and trim at 10 and a quarter. This will become the outer lid for your box, for your tray, so I'm going to set that aside to be scored. And then this strip that you trimmed off the end can go on pocket D. Next, pick up the 5.5 by 12 that remains and we'll trim horizontally at 10 and 3 quarters and 8.5. And Again, this is a future card base, so I'll set it aside to be scored. And then we have this rectangular strip that will trim horizontally at three and three quarters. This will go in pocket C. And then these two smaller pieces that remain can go in pocket D for, I didn't use them quite yet. <laughs> and then I'm moving on to page two of my instructions. So far we've just been trimming one piece of paper at a time. And that's primarily because of that um, box tray and lid. Now I'm gonna check my grain direction again at this yellow, this dark yellow piece. Hold by an edge, it drip, dips easily this way. That's very stiff. This time I want you to place, this is different, placing the paper in so it's dipping easily from left to right. Again, that accommodates the future folding that we'll be doing. So we'll, our first cut's at 10 and three quarters. 10 and three quarters, and then down to eight and a half. Now rotate the eight and a half piece and we'll trim at 11 and five and a half and the two larger pieces that we just made those become card bases so i'll set them aside to be scored and then the skinny guy that fell off the edge that goes in pocket d now i have this two and a quarter inch strip we're going to trim a whole bunch of little pieces they're one and a quarter inch in width so i'm just going to go on down the line and basically the way i do this when when i'm just figuring this out i just go a whole inch and then another quarter so that makes my first cut at 10 and three quarters. <laughs> now all I do is just scoot down to the next inch mark. So that's nine and three quarters plus one quarter inch. So my next cut is at nine and a half. And I do have these numbers listed in your instructions as well. So eight and a quarter, seven, five and three quarters, four and a half, three and a quarter, and two. We don't need this guy anymore, so he can go in pocket D, and the rest of these little rectangles are used in card set C. And then this long skinny piece is a scrap. I'm gonna add that to D for now. We'll use it later. Now I'm gonna take the print. In this case, we don't need to worry about the grain direction. That's because we're never gonna be folding. We're gonna make all panels out of this, so I'll just put it in any old way, and I'll cut at 11 and three quarters. <laughs> nine and a half and six and a quarter now rotate and we'll cut at eleven and a quarter nine and four and a half okay now the two pieces that we just created here are panels for that little box that we're making I'm just gonna set these aside in a separate pile 
and there's this narrow strip here. This is two and a quarter by six and a quarter now. I'll cut horizontally at three and three quarters and place this piece in pocket C. And we've got a couple of things that fell off the edges. Both of these can go in pocket D. Now I'm going to trim a bunch of rectangles. This is from a three quarter, three and a quarter by 12 piece. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, nine, six and three quarters, four and a half, two and a quarter. I'll gather up all the pieces I created and one of them is a scrap. So this little guy is in pocket D and the others go in pocket C. Then the next strip is two and a quarter by 12. We'll trim this one horizontally at nine and three quarters, six and a half, three and a quarter. Now again here we've made a series of three rectangles that are the same size for pocket C and then we have another sort of a I guess it is a square that's going to go in pocket D along with the really skinny strip that we took off the end of that print. Finally we've reached a place where we can trim two pieces at the same time. So I'm going to take this ivory linen, check the grain, and this time I want it dipping easily from top to bottom. And then same with the light yellow. Check your grain, dipping top to bottom, stack them neatly together and cut at 11 and 7. That paper is real heavy so you might just really feel that but your trimmer can handle it just fine. 7. Now rotate and trim at 10 and 5. Okay, these two pieces, or four pieces actually, it's two sets, are going to be scored to make a card base. I'm going to set them aside. And these wide strips that fell off the end, pocket D. And let's make some panels out of these guys. So this next uh, 4 by 12, we're going to trim at 10 and a half and 5 and a quarter. Gather up the two sets of panels, and those go in pocket A. And then the remaining pieces go in pocket D. And we're moving on to the next diagram already. So um, in this case, we will have our paper dipping easily top to bottom. I'm going to take one gold and one dark yellow. We actually have to trim four pieces the same way, but I'll take the two uh, gold, dark yellow, check grain, dipping top to bottom. Our first cut is at six and a quarter. And then I want you to rotate and cut at 11 and three quarters, 10 and a half, and nine. This is a little weird here. I'm going to have you take this large piece, set it aside to be scored. It's a set again. Then the next set of strips, there are two. One's skinnier than the other. So the wider set, I'm going to file in pocket C. The skinnier set, I'm going to cut horizontally at six inches. We're just taking a tiny, tiny little piece off the end that also goes in C. We did create <clears throat> just a few little scraps obviously this could be in a circular file and these if you wanted to save them just throw them in d no harm I'm putting it in there now finally there's a 5 by 12 left so we've got some some more i would call this somewhat advanced trimming just because there's a lot of rotating but if you take it step at a time it's it's no problem we'll cut at 11 and a half seven and three quarters and four all right, so this four inch piece we just made will go in pocket B. Then I'm going to pick up the next pair of rectangles and trim it horizontally at five and a half. This also will go in pocket B. There's one more rectangle. Right now it's three and three quarters by five and a half. We'll trim it horizontally at five. And this set of panels goes in pocket A. You just made a whole bunch of pretty tiny little pieces. I'm going to dispose of all of them. We get to do all of that one more time. So again, the, the light yellow, check your grain, dipping top to bottom, and the print. Same thing, dipping top to bottom, and we'll repeat that whole process. So we'll cut at six and a quarter, 
rotate, 11 and 3 quarters, 10 and a half, and 9. Here we've made a pair of card bases. I'll set them aside to be scored and grab one set of rectangles. This is the wider set. It goes right into pocket C. The skinnier set of, these are strips, not maybe not even rectangles, I guess. Uh, we can trim those horizontally at six and pop those in pocket C as well. And again, we've got some really skinny little scraps. If you'd like to dispose of those, you can do that. Now we have this wide strip remaining. We'll cut at 11 and a half, 7 and 3 quarters, and 4. We get to simply file this 4 inch piece in pocket B. Then the next pair, the next set, we'll cut horizontally at 5 and a half, also pocket B. The next pair, horizontally at 5. And this goes in A, and we can dispose of our little tiny end cuts here. Those are nothing. Okay, now we have reached the point where we will be uh, preparing our cut aparts. So, for those of you who are new in the corner, you're going to notice this little hash mark here. I'm going to line up that hash mark with the outside edge of my trimming blade and remove this. It's about an eighth of an inch we're taking off. And I'm going to rotate and do that on all four sides to turn this into a perfect 12 by 12. And what that does is just gives us a nice clean start out of the gates, making sure that we have as accurate of a 12 by 12 as possible. Just keep rotating all four edges and my reading here is 12 inches. So I'm getting a good start on prepping my cut aparts. If you are a stamper and would prefer to stamp all of your own sentiments, I still recommend using the cut-apart sheet as your cutting map. So basically, if you trim all of these pieces out, we include a bonus plain side on which you can stamp your very own sentiments if you prefer to use your own. What I like about this whole process is that you're learning how to make unique card structures um, that you can repeat again and again whether you are a stamper or not. I think card making and scrapbooking make wonderful uh, friends. Okay, so I'm going to place this in the trimmer so that happy birthday to you is on the right. And our first cut is at 11. Of course, you always want to make sure that if the blade slices straight through, it's not going to slice through any artwork. <laughs> Then slide down to 10, 7, and 4. Rotate, and we'll cut a bunch of 2-inch strips. So we'll cut at 10. Oops. Then we'll rotate and cut a bunch of pieces. We'll start at 9 and 3 quarters, 7 and a half, 5 and a quarter, and three. Everything we sliced up from that strip, all even the, the wider piece, it all goes in pocket B. Our next piece we will trim at nine and three quarters, seven and a half, five and a quarter, and three. Now, this I'm going to set aside with the other two pieces I set aside earlier that go on the tray with the lid. And then these other rectangles that are all the same, those are going to go in pocket B. Take this next strip. We're just going to trim that easily at 8 and 4. And all of this goes also in pocket B. There's a lot going in that pocket. Now these remaining two strips, we just need to trim a little off the end. So our first cut's at 11 and a half, and then five and three quarters. Repeat for the other one, 11 and a half, five and three quarters. And you've got four inner sentiments, and this is gonna be used in set C. And there just are two really small little scraps not used. When we get to this remaining cut apart, we have to do the same thing. Remove about an eighth of an inch from the outer edge to create the perfect 12 by 12. I'm going to start with this narrow strip on the right, the honey wildflower eight ounce on this edge. That should be on your right. And our first cut's at 11. 
seven and three quarters, and four and a quarter. Rotate and trim this section at nine, six, and three. Nine, six, three. All of these panels go in pocket A. And then the next strip will cut horizontally. Make sure happy birthday beautiful is on the far left. That's the largest piece. We'll cut at 10, eight, six, and four. All right, this larger happy birthday beautiful will go in pocket A. And then these other skinnier panels all go in C. Take the next strip, we'll trim at eight and four. All three of these go in pocket A. Now we have this guy. We're gonna put the B's on the right and we'll cut on the inch marks at first here. So it's 11, 10, nine, eight, seven. All right, then we're gonna go down to five and a quarter, three and a half, and one and three quarters. All right, so the little honey wildflower, there should be four of them going into pocket A. You can take all the rest of the Bs and put them in pocket B. <laughs> so cute. Next, I'm gonna get creative and use my grid ruler to trim these handmade pieces of paper. And um, what, one of the first things you can do is just take a 3x14 grid ruler and just make sure it's nice and vertical on the paper and lined up. And I use the grid on the ruler to just double check at top and bottom to make sure the edge of the paper is lined up with the, with the grid of the ruler. And I just have about maybe a half inch section here past the ruler's edge so that I can take the paper by an edge and just simply tear it away. Okay, so now just I have this little stri strip here, and I'm going to uh, dispose of that. Now I'll rotate and kind of do the same thing on the other edge, so I have two torn edges. One way you're doing with the grain, one you'll do against, and you can tell I was tearing against the grain this time. It didn't tear as nicely for me, did it? <laughs> okay, so now to make my panels, this is kind of cool, I need a three and a quarter inch strip of paper. There's a couple ways you could do it, but one one thing I love to do is just buddy up my rulers to create three and a quarter inch measurement from the edge. Because a lot of times you would take a ruler and you would go, okay, here's three and a quarter and mark, mark, and mark. You don't have to do that. Take the ruler and run it vertically. It's three inches wide. Then I'm gonna make I'm gonna find a, a friend for my ruler. And in fact in one of our kits recently we actually sent out a miniature one. This will even work with this. This is the little buddy here. Look at this guy, he's so cute. I could even use this one. So all I have to do is find a quarter of an inch on my little guy, run that line along the edge of the paper and marry it with my big guy. And now that's three plus a quarter is three and a quarter inches from the edge. And all I do is just stabilize firmly on the large ruler now and tear it toward me. Done, I have a three and a quarter inch strip. Let's repeat that for the second section here. So three plus a quarter, check for level, and tear. Nice. Now that I have these strips, I'm gonna to rotate them so my torn edge is on the left. I didn't mention that. Maybe we can, let's see if we can do them at the same time. I'll stack them. And now I want a five inch piece. Well, this is one and a half inches. So no problem. This is three. I'm gonna rotate my ruler horizontally. I grab two more inches from that ruler to get my measurement of five. One, two, three, four, five. As long as I have my bigger ruler next to the edge I'm tearing, I'm in good shape. Boom, done. Repeat, so one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Here we go. Tear away this edge. Okay, so now I have four panels of handmade paper with a lovely torn edge on all four sides and all of them will go in pocket B. Now remember when I removed the outer edge of one long edge and one short edge? I'm going to do the same thing on that second sheet. 
Next up with the torn edge on my left again, and I'm gonna find my three and a quarter inch wide strip. One, two, three, plus a quarter, and tear. Next, I'll stack these together and put the torn edge on my left. And this time I want a four and a half inch. <laughs> well, what's cool about this is one, two, three, four and a half. This, both of these rulers side by side, my mini and my three inch here. That mean equals four and a half. So it's just a little bit of math. I'm doing two strips at the same time. One, two, three, four and a half. Some scraps. And I've got four panels for card set A, so I'll just pocket those. Next, we're gonna do some scoring. I know this is a lot of prep work, but it's worth it in the end because you can get so many cards made with just very little initial effort. And it just is such wonderful use of the paper. So I'm gonna take this six and a quarter by nine inch piece. I'm tackling the stack of set-asides that we had for our card bases in kind of in reverse order. So whatever's on the top of the pile, you should probably have this print right on top. And I'm gonna score it horizontally. So you see the nine here, the six and a quarter here. I'm scoring at four and a half. A print side up in this case and you should repeat that three more times at four and a half you should have four cards the same size these grew up to become the card bases for set B B is in boy so I'll file that now I have a series of four five by seven panels I'm going to place them vertically into the score pile so that the five is at the top and score at two and a half card set C now I have some five and a half by eight and a half, just your standard card base. There's even an asterisk on my score pal at the four and a quarter inch mark. And that's where that's gonna go. We'll have two dark yellow and one brown. These will go in pocket A. You have three pieces left. Let's find that long skinny one and we're going to score this one horizontally. It's set 11 inches on the horizontal. That's at five and a half. That also is used in set A. Now we have this dark brown piece. This is the outside cover or lid for our tray. We'll score at uh, four and three quarters. That's four and three quarters and five and a half. I think it makes a little spine. I'll set this aside with the other items for the box that I've already set aside. On this gold piece, we are going to score three quarters of an inch and one and a half inches from each outside edge. So that's three quarters and one and a half. Now, if you're left-handed, that's a lot more comfortable for you to score at three quarters and one and a half. If you are right-handed, I kind of like to score from this end on these little shorties. So I'm gonna score, I'm gonna shove the paper all the way to the right edge of the base and score at 11 and a, 11 and a quarter and 10 and a half. I know it's kind of weird, but it gives me the same results. 11 and a quarter, 10 and a half, and then it feels better. 11 and a quarter and 10 and a half. So it's the same thing as scoring at three quarters and one and a half. It's just from the other edge of the paper. And now I have the score lines from every single edge, making it like this tray shape. So I'm gonna set that aside, get rid of my score pal, and let's make that tray first. When I'm about to make a tray of any kind, or even it's a box base or box lid, I like to work with the score lines facing up. It's a little easier to see the lines. And I'm just gonna be using a regular scissors, and I like to just maintain the position like vertical. So this base is not square, it's it's definitely has an orientation. So I wanna work vertically with this piece. Now from the right edge, there's the first score line and then there's the second score line. From the bottom, there's the first and the second score line, right? So I want to basically remove the second score line from the bottom edge until I reach the intersecting second score. So I'm gonna make a slit on the right side of that score line and on the left side. And I would call that like a dart, right? It's like a tiny, tiny V shape. I'm removing that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the outside left edge. So here's the first score, the second score. Let's remove it just until we reach that intersecting second score line going horizontal. Okay, so I took those out. I'm going to rotate the piece 180 degrees. So now it's vertical again. And this is where sometimes students will go wrong. They miss, they only do one turn. I want you to work with it vertically. And again, count one, two, remove the second line until you reach the horizontal intersecting. 
take out the dart and then go to this side and do the same thing one two so the innermost goes away all right good now on the in inner side of the first vertical score line I'm going to make an angled cut until I reach the second intersecting score line again and then from the right edge I'm going to remove the score line that exists there the second one from the bottom to take up that corner same thing here I'm going to go on the inner inside of this score line go all the way to the intersecting and then remove it from the side to take up the corner and what that gives me are two tabs and a flap rotate 180 degrees and let's repeat that so just cut up to remove that score and cut from the side to take out the corner. Repeat on the left edge, move up to the second score, enter from the side to remove the corner. And now I've got a really good looking piece that I'm gonna to use to make my, my tray. And that works with any size tray you want. So you can adjust the size of the tray by adjusting the distance of the score lines from all edges. If you wanted a one inch box, you would calculate the size of the lid or the tray that you want, the height of the sides that you want and double it, and then score accordingly. It's just, it's just really cool how this works. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold along all the score lines. And if you want to burnish those creases with a bone folder, you certainly can do that. You'll find that you are folding against the grain along the long edges. It, you know, since we're making a box, Anyway, all the sides have to be fold, folded, so at some point you're going to have to fold against the grain since it's folded. Now you don't need to fold on that little score line on the tabs, just on the big, on the second score, not the first. And notice again, I have the paper positioned vertically. Now I'm going to apply adhesive to these outside longest flaps on, on the left and right edges. Those are the long flaps, right? And these are the short flaps, long flaps. So the adhesive is here. And I'm simply going to fold the paper over onto itself to make a double thickness of paper. And then see how these tabs are going to end up turning in? And when I turn this up, it, turn, it makes the sidewalls of my box. So now I'm going to put adhesive on these short flaps on the outermost edge of the flap. But don't turn those over quite yet. What we're going to do is trap the tabs in between two layers of paper. So this gets turned in. And then this short flap goes up and over. Rotate. Bring the short the tabs are tucked in and turn at a 90 degree angle. And again, this goes up and over. And now I have a tray. At this point, if you want, you can fold on the score lines and making sure that the bumps of the scores go on the inside of the fold. That's the same case that's required for the tray as well. All folds, whenever possible. And I'm going to use a corner chomper if you happen to have one. And I'm just going to chomp the outside corners of this on the quarter, on the half inch setting, that is, half inch setting. And I'll do the same thing on the back or front. It doesn't matter what side or at this point. Okay, so now I have a nice looking cover for my tray. Next, I'm gonna take this beautiful brown ribbon with the gold metallic edge and measure off two 12 inch lengths. So if you just wanna use your grid ruler to help you do that, two 12 inch lengths of this. And then I'm gonna position this on my work surface with the bumps of the scores facing up, you know, so that this is the inside of the box. It's already kind of clear. And I'm gonna take my adhesive transfer gun if you'd like to use tape you could do that if you'd like to measure you can do that i'm going to make sure that the ribbon the grain of the ribbon wants to go in the direction where it would be wrapping itself around this box this lid so this is the grain going it wants to go this way so i'm going to flip it so it wraps itself correctly Okay, so now I have my ribbon attached to the front and back inside cover. Next, I want to attach the base of the tray so that the edge of the tray is right next to, but not on, the score line. That's kind of important, right? So I will add my adhesive, right? It's probably just easier to put it on the tray bay or this lid. And knowing that it, it doesn't 
go all the way to the edge, okay? So you wanna be careful about where you put your adhesive here. And now I'm gonna take the tray and center it top to bottom, right next to the score line, the right score line. Keeping the spine of the book, or spine of the lid, they're able to move. Next, I'm gonna take one of these panels I had set aside earlier. Remember this little stack of stuff that we had here? I'm gonna take one of these panels and just make sure if there's an orientation with text that I wanna to try to pay attention to. Once you determine that, you'll want to round only the left corners, top and bottom corners on the left side. And we'll place this on the left inside lid. And the reason we're doing this too is it gives it, a, it covers the edge of the ribbon and it also gives this a double thickness center at top, bottom, left, right, within that scored area. Then close the lid. Take the other panel, double check the orientation that you desire. I want it to be this way. And I'm gonna round the top and bottom right corners on the half inch setting. Add some adhesive to this. And then center that within the front cover. Isn't that nice? It's just the perfect little box. Okay, so to anchor this, I'm gonna go into pocket D and I've got a whole bunch of fun things in there. And I think I've got like this ivory strip here and I should have a thinner gold strip. So we have ivory and gold. Obviously these strips are too long. So let's just refresh. The height of this is six and a quarter. So I'm just going to bring this over my trimmer and trim these both to six and a quarter inches in length. And then I can nest these together with some adhesive. And if you do like that texture of the linen, you might want to just make sure that's facing up. It's probably hard to see on my white table here. And then I will add adhesive to this strip. And since it's going to be on the outside cover, you know, I just did a nice thorough coat. If you want, you can use a grid ruler to make sure that this is nice and level. Now, if you happen to have a little paper distressing tool, um, if, you, if you did the cruise in 20, uh, let's see, 2019, you would have received a metal one. That's really kind of cool. For some reason, I don't have mine handy. But you can just run that along the edge of this if you like this finishing touch. It's totally and completely optional. I just kind of phrase it a little bit. Also, if you want to tie in some extra, go that little extra mile, you can. Just take some of the same ribbon to carry it through, wrap it around to the back, and tape those ends in place. And then I'll add some adhesive to this. If you wanted to use foam adhesive, you could make it pop a little bit. Totally designer's choice. And then I'll place this kind of on the right side of my box here. Now, once you get envelopes and everything into that, it'll be a lot more stable. And then you can tie it shut with your cards inside and hand it off. Maybe someone invited you over to the house for dinner or a cookout, and then you could say, here, here's a little hostess gift for you. Thank you so much for having us. Love that. Okay, now it's actually time to get started making cards. I'll remove everything from pocket A, and we can get started. So a really good best practice at this point is to turn to the appropriate page of your instructions. In this case, for set A, we're gonna find that on page five. And then take everything out of the pocket, fold the card bases in half along the score lines, if that's kind of the, how they're folded, and then arrange everything in the order of, by order of size, similar size. And then we can distribute all the pieces needed for each card onto our work surface. So here's my my largest card bases. I'm gonna start out with two uh, horizontal cards and then two 
vertical cards. So now this one opens from the top edge and this one opens from the side. But that's exactly how we've got it all planned out. Okay, so the next largest panels will come next. I'm going to find the ivory linen texture and put that on both horizontal card bases. And then I'm going to add my light yellow to the vertical cards. I just keep grabbing from my pile. Then I have the next smallest size and these should nest right on. So the print will go here of, and then the light yellow here and then contrast with the dark yellow and the gold. So again, I'm just, when I'm doing this, I'm just distributing color. The next panel, this is kind of easy. All the panel is, panels are handmade. You just kind of study the paper to see which side is most sparkly and that tends to be the side that I use on the top. So whatever you prefer. Now I have outer sentiments. So you're the bee's knees on the horizontals and then beauty is in the eye of the bee holder on the verticals. Next, each card will receive the ball jar tag, and I just planned ahead that these will go on these cards. It's kind of cool. Not only that, but I've also planned ahead for these cute little honey labels to go on the outside of each jar. And then we have the inside of the card. So we have, thank you for being so wonderful, both on the horizontal, and then happy birthday, be beautiful in the vertical cards. Now, as a general practice, I typically will make one card with you, and then you'll have the knowledge you need to complete the remaining three cards in the set. So I'm going to stack up all the elements for the three cards, set those aside, and we'll make this one together. Okay, so let's just begin. It's, this is a quite easy and straightforward assembly. I'm going to take my adhesive and nest the largest panel onto the folded card base. And then the next panel is the print. So I'll add adhesive to that and center that on as well. Next, I have the handmade panel. So I'll find my sparkly side. They're both pretty sparkly in this case. And put the adhesive on that. So it's just nest, 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 nest. And guess what? Now on this one, you have that option. If you happen to have, again, that paper distressor tool or if you want to like tear away the edges, there's a lot of uh, options here. I love how Jacqueline designed the outer edges of all of these panels to have sort of this torn edge already there. So what you're, all you're doing is kind of enhancing it. I know a lot of you like to apply ink to the outside edges of your panels as well. So designer's choice as always. And then I'll add this right to the center of the handmade. All kinds of fun things happening here. Now, here is the ball jar tag and the honey label. I left the the hole in because it comes, most of the tags came with the hole re remaining. So then I'm taking my corner chopper and I'm using the quarter inch setting. I don't want to overly round these corners. It's such a small thing. And this should then a beautiful fit right into that ball jar. I mean, if you center that in there, it's just so nice. And it even adds like a little shape to it. Then in your kit, you also have some yellow uh, waxed linen cord. So if you would like, and I, and I thought about this as I was making these, if you want to fold the ribbon in half and in half again, You'll be cutting it into four equal lengths, and one length can then be used for each card because I'm not using this anywhere else. And that way you don't overwrap or, you know, you have just enough that you need for all four. So it gives me two times around the top, and then you can tie, if you want, you can tie a double knot just around the top of the ball jar. And then we have these adorable little bee charms. So I will thread a charm onto this as well and just tie it on. And if you want to use a bow, you can. Depends on how much patience you have. But for filming, maybe I won't tie a bow today. Um, totally up to you. It's super cute either way. And then you can trim the ends if you have any to spare. But again, this way you don't overuse on some of the jars and underuse on others. And then if you wanted to, you could use your foam adhesive circles, or if you want to keep that dimension low, go ahead and just place the adhesive directly on this and adhere it to the right edge of the card. If you want it really low, then skip the charm. 
<laughs> but I think the charm, oh, it's just so adorable. And then thank you for being so wonderful. And this is a nice thank you. This will go on the inside of the card. Now let's just say you want to add a little foundation here. I know this card is five and a half inches wide. Well, lo and behold, so is my scrap. So that's why I keep that scrap pile handy. It's just nice to have some things to add. So that'll be a nice foundation for my sentiment here. It just adds a little something, right? So there is your first card from set A. This is the one that, oh, that's this is the one that we made together. If you want to end up gluing that charm in place, you can do that too. And to look at the finished one, so this is the one we made. Okay, now on this one, do you see that I have some texture there? Karen brought in some texture folders. And I think this one is by We Are Memory Keepers. It's the, um, it's just this hexagon shaped element. It does look like, just like the beehive, just the brilliance of the beehive in nature. So if you happen to have any bee related or just any kind of a pattern, I like to emboss areas that are more visible on the card and that the reveal of that light yellow panel is, is pretty nice here. So that's why that looks that way. And then the other vertical cards, I did the same thing. I embossed this panel, but not this one. Just to show you, it's not required, but it just really, you know, adds that little extra something. And then you can take the box that you make and these four cards along with their envelopes will fit perfectly into the box and that's how I designed it to hold four cards and four envelopes. Now I've emptied the contents of pocket B and turned to page six of my instructions. This is set B with the four and a half by six and a quarter inch cards. I've sorted everything out in order by size and folded my card bases in half. So let's just get these all laid out just like we did with set A. And I'm gonna start with the largest pieces first. So those are my folded card bases and I'll distribute. These are all vertical cards, by the way, a dark yellow and then a print. Then this darker gold color, and then the light yellow color. So those are the four nice card bases. Now my next size panel down. These are still pretty big. I'm gonna start with the light yellow nesting on the dark yellow. And I love this part. This is the puzzle, the puzzle of the whole thing. Then we have the dark yellow, about the print here and the gold here, continuing to distribute color. Now, if I take the next set of panels, these are these are nesters, right? So that the gold will go here. Then light yellow on top of dark yellow, the dark yellow on top of the print, the print on top of the gold. Next, we have these four handmade panels, and I did actually go ahead and embossed that um, beautiful uh, honeycomb texture folder on this. So again, if you happen to have something like that, uh, you can you can use that. Now, on the outside of every one of, well, first, I guess next, I'll distribute the envelopes. So each one gets an envelope, and the fun fact is that this light yellow paper of the envelope is the exact same stock as the light yellow in the collection, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so on the front outside of each envelope, we've got Don't Worry, Be Happy on the first two cards, and then Advice from a Honeybee on the second two cards. Then we have an insert for each envelope. So... And be better soon is going to go on the first ones. And then that list of advice from a honeybee, create a buzz, etc. That goes on the inside of those two card pockets. Finally, the inside of the card, thinking of you on the be better soons and then and be happy. That's the last piece of advice from a bee. Then each one will get this tiny little bee square. <laughs> bee square. And there will be an extra. Okay, so they all, again, assemble the same way. So I'll stack up the first card two, three, and four, and we'll make this first one together. Okay, so let's get started with this. It's a super easy assemble. Um, and again, you can, it's just nesting a bunch of panels. And that's what I like about this style of card making, because if you're making four cards at a time, you do these steps in succession for all four cards. So. You know, you're going to be nesting panels on one card, nest panels on all the cards, nest all the panels. So I'm going to make sure I got these, didn't get these screwed up. Okay, so this center is on here. And if you don't feel comfortable eyeballing this because it's a pretty big reveal, use your ruler. I should have because I can tell it's a little crooked. <laughs> and then this will nest next. 
That one's a, sh a, a narrower reveal, so it's a little easier to see. And then this can be either left smooth or you could emboss it with some texture. Well, right away, we can maybe add our thinking of you to the inside of the card. This is a six and a quarter inch card, so if I wanted to, maybe I can find a panel. I'm going to trim this to six and a quarter, and I can have a little bit of a strip, again, to anchor my sentiment, thinking of you. Still plenty of room to write. So now my card's... <laughs> almost done isn't this cool okay so we have the adorable little guy and if you wanted to you could distress those edges totally optional but this simply goes on the outside of your little po uh, pocket envelope here fits perfectly right on there now you do have a one and a quarter inch strip of dark yellow in your kit this is optional but what you could do is trim it to one and one eighth by one and one eighth. And that gives you this beautiful mat for your little B square. I mean, I know it seems a little putsy, but so if you don't, if you're not in the mood, then don't worry about it. But it just kind of adds, adds a little contrast between this piece and this piece. Next, you can take a piece of your, um, brown ribbon with the gold edge, like a two inch piece. And you can loop it in half and put it on the top of your tag here and right in front. And if you hit grab a stapler, and again, this step is optional as well, and just staple this right to the top of your tag. Then take your B and just put adhesive on the lower portion of him and Add that to the top of your little insert. So basically you have some ribbon and you have a tag to pull on. That indicates to the re recipient that, yeah, you gotta grab this, okay? So then you slide that into the pocket and then put your adhesive on the back of the pocket only and center that onto the card so that, you know, the envelope won't be centered. It's going to be like the whole piece, right? So if you try to center the envelope, this might extend past the top edge. Don't worry. Be happy and be better soon. And then the inside is thinking of you. Sweet, right? That's how all of these cards assemble. Let's take a look at the finished samples that have been embossed. So you can see the difference just with that honeycomb texture on that panel. And there you have your little setup with the now this has not been matted, it still looks very nice. I wanted to show you that you can do it without having to trim the one and one eighth inch circle. And that's just bonus instruction that I'm providing to you in the video. This is not in the written instructions at all. And there's your final embossed panel and your little guy. So if you find a more fun or more appealing way that you want to attach this or just leave that little guy out altogether or skip the ribbon, whatever you want, again, as always, designer's choice. So the remaining three cards in your set will assemble the exact same way. For our final card set, you'll empty the contents of everything in pocket C. Right now, I'm not worrying about folding anything on my card base. And I've got all my pieces sorted and in order. Uh, by size and there are a lot of elements in this card so be patient with yourself while you gather everything up if it helps to just look ahead and, and plan like the card base and look at all the colors involved otherwise just follow along with me and I'm going to distribute the largest pieces first which is the card bases notice I have my cutting mat ready we're going to do some some cutting in a little bit so I've got two horizontal light yellow card bases and then two ivory linen, this gorgeous texture. Those are going to be the other two cards. Now the next panel size, I'm going to go with these rectangles. So you've got a gold rectangle going with each of these light yellow cards, then a dark brown and a print for these other ones. Next, let's distribute the sentiments that nest onto these panels. So the first two will be thank you for th uh, Thank you for being my friend. And this is my favorite. Let's get ready to bumble. I love that. Okay, now we have this whole series of these printed panels. Every single card gets two. So if you distribute two to each card, you're good to go. Same is true for these dark yellow panels. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. And there's one around here somewhere. I'm confident. Probably just stuck together. Ah, there it is, right there. Okay, 
two of those. Now we have these strips. There are two sets. One is larger than the other. So of these long strips, I'm going to put the dark yellow here. Then this is a printed strip, but I'm going to use it plain side up and you'll see why when you are doing the assembly. And then the gold will be next, followed by this light yellow. Now I have another series here. We're going to go light yellow on the gold, print on the plain side of the print. That's why. And then we have the dark yellow and the gold. So continuing to just distribute color. These two cards get the you're in my thoughts today and then the other two are happy birthday to you. Once again, all cards are assembled the same way. So I'll stack these three, set those aside, and we'll do this first one together. I'll set everything aside except the card base. And you might wanna do this, these little cuts with all of your cards at once. And so I'm, I'm going to bring in my uh, grid ruler and a craft knife. I will have my card base positioned so that the bump of the score is facing down for this step. In the end, it doesn't really matter all that much. Now with my grid ruler, I'm gonna find one and a half inches in from the left edge. So that's one and that's a half. Next, I'm going to make a slit from the top edge of the card down to the score line. I'm gonna do the same thing from this edge. So in order to do that, I'm gonna turn the card around just for a moment, find one and a half inches again and then go from the score line down to the bottom edge so it matches. Okay. Then I need to make a mark three and a half inches in from the left edge. So I'm gonna have to buddy up because this is only a two inch ruler. <laughs> My other little guy is one and a half. So one, two, three and a half. That puts me exactly where I want to be with my buddied rulers, I'm exactly at three and a half inches. The other option is to just to measure and mark it. And now I'm going to bring my knife from the score line down to the bottom edge of the card. And what I've done is recreated what you see in this sketch right here, this five by seven card base sketch. You can see the score line and the measurements and all the things that it makes. Now, and this is really fun. I'm going to hold the card in my hand. I'm going to take this bigger rectangle and this piece right here and I'm going to twist it around. See how easily that worked? Just do a little twist. Just do that twist. <laughs> and then I'll just make a crease. And what that does is it creates a flap. And they call this the impossible card because it looks impossible. Like how can you imagine that this is made from just one sheet of paper, but with those clever cuts and the twist, that's exactly what happens. It's just, I absolutely love this. Okay, so now we have all these other pieces. So I think it would be best if we just started with the plethora of these little panels. Let's take those bumblebee panels and you'll notice that the panels fit perfectly on those flaps of the car. And then same with that dark color as well. So see how that nests? Go ahead and put adhesive on all of those panels. You can do all four at the same time and then nest them onto the appropriate area of the card. Another thing that's really super easy, we can just go ahead and do it right now if you'd like. I'll add adhesive to my You're In My Thoughts Today sentiment and nest it onto the smaller rectangle or smaller strip. And then again, on the larger strip. If you're using this ATG adhesive, I, a little dab will do ya. It's really strong and you don't need to cover the whole thing with adhesive. Now, when I add this to my card base, you wanna make sure that you don't apply adhesive behind this open area here or you're gonna have some issues. So just be aware, I can probably add a little bit more adhesive to this side and maybe one little strip on that side. And then if I use my grid on my cutting mat, just to make sure everything's nice and level before I center this into this area here and make sure that's nice and level. Okay, so now my impossible card is starting to look even more impossible because when someone looks at this and it, it's just really amazing. And what's neat too is it uses very little paper. When I make a five by seven card, you need a seven by 10 inch piece of paper. This only needed a five by seven piece of paper. So more, more cards out of less paper. Now I'm going to nest the final pop up sentiment onto its mat. And before you adhere this, you have the option of uh, wrapping it. If you want, you could wrap around and tie a bow, just tie a knot. It's completely up to you how you want to deal with this. Maybe this time I'll 
I mean, there's so much ribbon to go around, so you have the joy of just deciding what you want to do here. And I'll show you what I did on some of the other cards. Just some fun, easy things. Require no time at all. For more tips, you can uh, turn into my ribbon basics video that I have available to help you get, get some ribbon ideas because we always include a, a nice assortment of ribbon. I'm adding adhesive and then placing this right on the pop-up. Isn't that just a super fun, easy card? Way easier than you'd expect. If you don't feel comfortable using a craft knife and a cutting mat, I recommend using the ruler and a pencil to draw a line. Then go ahead and use a long blade scissors to make a cut with, with scissors. And it will work the same exact way. I just think sometimes that the lines with the craft knives are just a little bit straighter. So let's look at the remaining cards from this set so you can see the finishing touches. Let's see, on these two cards, I did just do a straight ribbon wrap, then I made an individual a basic bow and used glue lines to attach them. And it kind of gives it just a little bit more of a low profile knot. Not much though. Here's my knot on the standard tie, and this is on the basic bow. Very pretty though. I do love the look of that on this. It just, mm, just sweet. And on this one, I simply made a basic bow and it adhered it. I had a little bit more space on the sentiment for happy birthday, so then I could just make my basic bow and attach it to the left edge. Otherwise, all the assembly on these cards is exactly the same. So if you liked these cards, if you like this theme, and if you happen to be a scrapbooker, or even if you're a beginner scrapbooker, come and meet me over at the Page Kit Workshop for Let It Be. We'll have a lot of fun turning our page kit into eight gorgeous, fully embellished pages, and I'll share a lot of tips along the way, and plus, we won't have any scraps. I'll see you there.